draw from her husband any satisfactory description of Mr. Bingley. They attacked him in various ways, with fair-faced questions, ingenious suppositions, and distant surmises, but he eluded the skill of all of them, and they were at last obliged to accept the second-hand intelligence of their neighbour, Lady Lucas. Her report was highly favourable, so William had been delighted with him. He was quite young, wonderfully handsome, extremely agreeable, and to crown the whole, he meant to be at the next assembly with a large party. Nothing could be more delightful. To be fond of dancing was a certain step towards falling in love, and very lively hopes of Mr. Bingley's heart were entertained. If I can but see one of my daughters happily settled at Netherfield, said Mrs. Bennet to her husband, and all the others equally well married, I shall have nothing to wish for. In a few days, Mr. Bingley returned from Mr. Bennet's visit and sat about ten minutes with him in his library. He had entertained hopes of being admitted to a sight of the young ladies of whose beauty he had heard much, but he only saw the father. The ladies were somewhat more fortunate for they had the advantage of ascertaining from an upper window that he wore a blue coat and rode a black horse. An invitation to dinner was soon afterwards dispatched and already had Mrs. Bennet planned the courses that were to credit to her housekeeping. When an answer arrived which deferred it all, Mr. Bingley was obliged to be in town the following day and consequently unable to accept the honour of their invitation, etc., Mrs. Bennet was quite disconcerted. She could not imagine what business he could have in town so soon after his arrival in Hertfordshire, and she began to fear that he might always, flying from one place to another, and never settled at Netherfield as he ought to be. Lady Lucas quieted her fears a little by starting the idea of his being gone to London only to get a large party for the ball, and a report soon followed that Mrs. Bingley Mr. Bingley, sorry, was to bring twelve ladies and several gentlemen with him to the assembly. The girls grieved over such a large number of ladies, but were comforted the day before the ball by hearing that instead of twelve he had only brought six with him from London, his five sisters and a cousin. And when the party entered the assembly room, it consisted of only five altogether. Mr. Bingley his two sisters, the husband of the eldest, and another young man. I'm just going to show you this little illustration there. Mr. Bingley was good-looking and gentlemanlike. He had a pleasant countenance and easy, unaffected manners. His 
Mrs. Hurst at once with Miss Bingley, declined being introduced to any other lady, and spent the rest of the evening in walking about the room, speaking occasionally to one of his own party. His character was decided. He was the proudest, most disagreeable man in the world, and everybody hoped that he would never come there again. Amongst the most violent against him was Mrs. Bennet, whose dislike of his general behaviour was sharpened into particular resentment by his having slighted one of her daughters. Elizabeth Bennet had been obliged by the scarcity of gentlemen to sit down for two dances, and during part of that time Mr. Darcy had been standing near enough for her to overhear a conversation between him and Mr. Bingley, who came from the dance for a few minutes to press his friend to join in. Come, Darcy, said he, I must have you dance. I hate to see you standing about by yourself in this stupid manner. You had much better dance. I certainly shall not. You know how I detest it, unless I am particularly acquainted with my partner. At such an assembly as this, it would not be insupportable. Your sisters are engaged, and there is not another woman in the room whom it would not be a punishment to me to stand up with. I would not be so fastidious as you are, quite bigly, for a kingdom upon my honour. I never met with so many pleasant girls in my life as I have this evening, and there are several of them you see uncommonly pretty. You are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room, said Mr. Darcy, looking at the eldest Miss Bennet. Oh, she is the most beautiful creature I ever beheld. But there is one of her sisters sitting down just behind you is very pretty, and I dare say very agreeable. Do let me ask my partner to introduce you. Which do you mean? And turning round, he looked for a moment at Elizabeth. Till catching her eye, he withdrew his own and coldly said, She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. And I am, no, and I am in no humour at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. You had better return to your partner and enjoy her smiles for you are wasting your time with me. Mr. Bingley followed his advice. Mr. Darcy walked off and Elizabeth re remained with no very cordial feeling towards him. She told the story, however, with great spirit among her friends, for she had a lively, playful disposition which delighted in anything ridiculous. The evening altogether passed off pleasantly to the whole family. Mrs. Bennet had seen her eldest daughter much admired by the Netherfield party. Mr. Bingley had danced with her twice, and she had been distinguished by her sisters. Jane was as much gratified by this as her mother could be, though in a quiet way. Elizabeth felt Jane's pleasure. Mary had heard herself mentioned to Miss Bingley as the most accomplished girl in the neighbourhood, and Catherine and Lydia had been fortunate enough to never be without partners, which was all that they had learned yet to care for at a ball. They returned, therefore, in good spirits to Longbourn, the village where they lived, and of which they were the principal inhabitants. They found Mr. Bennet still up, with a book he was regardless of time, and on the present occasion he had a good deal of curiosity as to the event of an evening which had raised such splendid expectations. He had rather hoped that all his wife's views on the stranger would be disappointed, but he soon found that he had a very different story to hear. Oh, my dear Mr. Bennet, as she entered the room, we have had the most delightful evening, a most excellent ball. I wish you had been there. Jane was so admired. Nothing could be like it. Everybody said how well she looked, and Mr. Bingley thought her quite beautiful, and danced with her twice. Only think of that, my dear. He actually danced with her twice, and she was the only creature in the room that he asked a second time. First of all, he asked Miss Lucas. I was so vexed to see him stand up with her, but, however, he did not admire her at all. Indeed, nobody can, you know, and he seemed quite struck with Jane as she was going down the dance. So he inquired who she was and got introduced and asked her for the two next. Then the two third, he danced with Miss King and the two fourth with Maria Lucas and the two fifth with Jane again and 
sprained his ankle on the first dance. Oh, my dear, continued Mrs. Bennet, I am quite delighted with him. He is so excessively handsome, and his sisters are charming women. I never in my life saw anything more elegant than their dresses. I dare say the lace upon Mrs. Hurst's gown. Here she was interrupted again. Mr. Bennet protested against any description of finery. She was therefore obliged to seek another branch of the subject, and related with much bitterness the spirit, and some exaggeration, the shocking rudeness of Mr. Darcy. But I can assure you, she added, that Lizzie does not lose much by not suiting his fancy, for he is a most disagreeable, horrid man, not at all worth pleasing, so high and conceited, that there was no enduring him. He walked here, and he walked there, fancying himself so very great, not handsome enough to dance with. I wish you had been there, my dear, to have given him one of your set-downs. I quite 